Remember my dad had to write a speech or speak in front of somebody. He always asked me to help him and read it over. And I never wanted to have to write this book. My father taught my sister and I many things. He taught us that age never mattered, the fact that we were girls never mattered. Naming only a few things, my dad taught us how to ride a bike, pick up after ourselves, and drive. Not only did he teach us how to drive, but he made sure we knew how to drive a truck. Of course, his teaching would not stop there, because he also taught me how to back up a truck with a trailer attached to the back. My father showed us that there were no limits to how much we could achieve, how hard we could work, or how much we were loved. My sister had a job that began at 5 a.m. in Quincy and ended at 9 a.m. My dad thought this was the perfect job because it gave her an hour to get from Quincy to her second job lifeguarding in Hall at 10 a.m. We also thought this was the perfect schedule, normal in fact, because it was the type of schedule that he always kept. My sister and I never felt neglected while my father worked because we always knew he was working to enrich our lives. We also knew that when he wasn't working, he would spend every free minute with our family or around the house. My mother constantly shows us her love through words and actions, lots of hugs and kisses. My father he told, us, told us he loved us and would also give us a hug, but my father also showed us his love through expectations and celebrations of successes. Not only did we get an improving smile when we succeeded, but we also got an approving smile when we didn't succeed, because at least we tried and gave it our all when trying. I loved that smile. For the past two years, I've been going to school to work on a degree in leadership. Although my father did not possess a degree in leadership, he taught me valuable and precious lessons about leadership. My father taught me that a person doesn't need a title to be a leader. He also taught me that just because a person has a title, it doesn't mean they have respect or are a leader. Earning something, whether it be a car, a degree, a job, a title, will allow others to begin to respect you. But he taught us that it's not about other people. My father taught us it's about the respect and pride you build and earn within yourself. My father liked to keep things simple. He used to say, when you're honest, there's less to remember. His sense of honesty is reinforced by his nickname at the fire station, while he and his two brothers worked together on Hull Fire. Together, Joe, Bobby, and Frank, or known as Joe Lai, Bull Lai, and Tell No Lai. <laughs> when I had a question about anything, I used to call up my dad. He was my own personal Google, and I will miss that. Um, one time while I was working a summer job, someone asked me my last name, and I told him it was Lyons. And he said he could tell, and then said, um, which one's your father? And I said, Frank. And he said, oh, Frank and I, we were good friends, best friends. So I went home, and I, and I don't, and I said to Dad, Dad, this man came up to me and he said, oh, he was your best friend. And my father looked me straight in the eye and he said, the next time anyone ever tells you that I'm your best friend, you tell them I have one best friend and it's your mother. <laughs> and that was true. My mother and my father were best friends. And they love each other very much. Um, well, this past few weeks I've been able to spend a lot of time with my family members and I also heard a story of when my father was younger and he might have been a little overweight in high school, I've heard. Um, and so I guess when he would come home from school he had lots of younger brothers and a, sis and a younger sister and older sister, but he would just lay on them and tell them it would only hurt for a minute. <laughs> And then he might raise his hands up and say, look, no hands. <laughs> He'd 
say big stuff, Beth. Big stuff. Come on now. My father also loved to travel to Hawaii. The last time he and my mother were in Hawaii, he sent me a postcard. Whenever I read the postcard, I can hear his voice and see his smile. I thought I would read the postcard he sent so I could hear his voice again. Dear Beth, how are you? We have reached the last hostel of our journey. Traveling by donkey through the island has been a rich and spiritual adventure. Your mother has become quite the surfer. A few lessons the first week and it was no stopping her. Well, I have to go and catch the sunset. Love, Dad. My Franklin, I imagine you now in Hawaii, surrounded by the beautiful ocean, serene landscape, and tropical dreams. Know that you are truly loved and truly missed. And we love you, Dad. Aloha. a lovely, quiet, they're a quiet family. He's a lovely person. I just want to say to Kathy that I know she's going to miss Frank so much. All their trips to Disney and to Hawaii. Um, I wish them all the love and happiness with the girls and what's to come. I worked with Frank. I knew Frank as a, as a kid and uh, he's the nicest gentleman I ever met in my life. Classy guy. That's the best of the best. You worked on the fire department as well, right? Yeah, for 33 years. And Frank was my captain when I retired. Wonderful. My only sad thing is I didn't get to work from his chief. My name is Dr. John Silva. I remember that Frank was a very caring man. He did a wonderful job as a fire chief, even though it was just for a too brief a period. Uh, but he cared for everybody. He had empathy for people. He was just a person that you want your kids to grow up to be like. He came from a tremendous family whom we all know and think very highly of, and I'm sure he'll be missed. Miss him as much as, or more knows, actually, than everybody else. Bradford Pope, I'm retired. I knew Frank since he was a special police officer. I know his whole family since they were kids, and he's just a great guy.